Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver, can deliver, can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. I take time and I write down All the things that I love on my eye now Best believe my list gonna be like five miles long Best believe it's love that makes me sing this song The cleanest beers on the waters Friendly people meet in every corner Togetherness and love is what we stand for We stand for, we stand for Look at how we've grown from we've grown. Fifty years we strong and more to come. made possible by the efforts of the Center for Democracy and Good Governance, CDGG. The Center for Democracy and Good Governance is a sound organization established to promote and strengthen democracy. For too long now, or generally perceived poorly educated electorate, have fallen victim to the cheap and inferior propaganda of those seeking to hold others captive under the guise of democracy. Gladly. The CDGG uses edification to help to actively pursue a sustainable approach to reorient our people towards the importance of electing and selecting people of good character to public life. Through edification, we will highlight the importance of education appropriate to our development, proper health care and facilities as our right, respect for law and order, not to mention upgrading our people's thinking so they could become qualified participants in the democratic process to their advantage. After all, Grenada's national constitution makes allowances for the ideal of free men to enjoy freedom from fear and want, which can be best achieved if conditions are created whereby everyone may enjoy his economic, social and political, civil and cultural rights. I want the best for my family, so every meal has to be perfect. Every bite has to say, mm, mm, mm. There's no doubt in my mind that the best in frozen meats and vegetables has to come from the country cold store. Hams, turkey, sausages, beef, pork, chicken. I just don't know my family is in safe hands. Thank you, country cold store, for being there for us for the next years. The country cold store, providing the best in frozen meats and vegetables since 1969. Attention all forward-thinking companies. Sure you can do with a continuous positive boost to your image and impact your bottom line. Hiring the right people with the right attitude and mindset is where to start. Even if you did not get it right through your current hiring methods, we can help develop the right mindset for your current employees. If you think training is expensive, try not training, and you will experience a perpetual downward spiral in patronage on account of increased satisfied customers. Take things into your hands and engage the best at motivation customer care training with a tried and tested track record. Visit www.efrederick.com now and learn how you can change the atmosphere in your business and improve the customer experience for everyone who does business with you. Spine Island Beach Resort and Belmont Estate are two such local entities of world renown that have benefited tremendously from ongoing customer social skills and motivation training. Training changes everything for the better for any business and every team member. Enhance employee performance through increased awareness and passion for the job at hand. Greater potential in your workforce awaits you through engaged high-energy training at works. Log on now, www.efrederick.com. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver, can deliver, can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Eddie Frederick. 
Wonderful folks, wonderful. And welcome to Edification 213. And what a wonderful opportunity for me to tell you about the spiritual significance of this number, 213. It is regarded as an angel number and means to stay true to yourself by remaining positive. In order to fulfill your desires, folks, you need a positive mindset and continue believing in your talents and skills. Your angels are sending this message to you to let you know that you have their support. So don't doubt yourself. Stop doubting yourself. Too many of us seem to be superstitious about any number with 13 in it. We tend to think of it as bad for luck. And so we avoid it like the plague. We have to understand and appreciate that from source, we are either destined for good or bad based on our upbringing and of course the environment and forces we are surrounded by. It takes, you know, a lot of, you know, share, share will, so to speak, for the strong to escape any captivity by his or her circumstance or circumstances. Of course, you will see <laughs> a little bit of a, a puffy face here today. I had a, a dental emergency midweek and just had to deal with it because, you know, these things come up at the worst possible time. But notwithstanding, I'm committed. I've got to do what I've got to do. So here I am, face and all, delivering as promised. Many of us folks who come from what is today described as a poor, destitute, or even abusive background have overcome a lot to the point where we are doing pretty well today. Though we may not be well off totally, we are not where we once were. And in the process, we are evolving with a measure of continuous success. Isn't that beautiful? There might be one or two things that we still have to attend to in order to soar even higher with our lives. But currently, we are very much on our way to something and somewhere good with our lives. All we've got to do on our way is, of course, just stay focused. So just like our angel number of, 20, of 213, which... Of course, this edition, edification is, tells us to stay true to ourselves by remaining positive. It might be hard, but it's not impossible. Remember Sir Eric used to say years ago, the difficult we do right away, the impossible will take a little longer. But it is not something that we are not going to attempt. Folks, it has been close to 40 years now that I have been doing public broadcasts. And all of the period from 1995 to the present, I have been consistently warning Grenadians of the pitfalls of not paying attention. It had to take many getting what we call the shitty end of the stick and falling out of grace with the likes of the old nastiness for them to realize that this man ain't good and ain't good long. As I said, I used to be friendly with him personally between 1984 and 1989. And when I discovered who he consistently has been, I had absolutely no choice but to end my personal association with him as he proved to be not the kind of company I would want to keep. The signs I saw, the moves I saw made, the requests made, proved to me that this man is not a good man. And because I did not wish to be tainted by this inherently selfish, dishonest, wicked, and evil character, I relinquished all association and never looked back. So when I tell you he ain't good and he ain't good long, I know what I'm telling you. I'm not telling you what people tell me. Folks, share the life. Let's get many people in because the mere fact that I start, I start like this, you know, is blast that is coming because we have to put people 
in their place. Share the live, tag your friends, and get them in the room. See two main successful Grenadian men who were my extremely close friends for years. I recall introducing to this young nastiness back then, between 1984 and 1989. Their friendship was perceived to be an unbreakable bond to the point where long after I distanced myself from him, they continued to level with me about their continued experience with him. Even though he appeared to be close with them, it was always about him. One in particular stopped him in his tracks early when he realized what he was attempting to do on a particular instant. The other was not so astute and therefore always got caught until enough became enough. I am not at liberty to give any details of our frank discussions, but all I can tell you is that I have the files, which support strongly my detest for this jagabat of a human being, today correctly referred to as the old nastiness. Nothing can convince me that this element is to be otherwise referred. There must be a clarion call long after he's passed on for him to be referred to by all and sundry as the old nastiness, as that is how history should remember him. Way in the earlies, he was observed to be the type of man that if it became necessary for him to sell anyone close to him, whether mother, father, son, or Holy Ghost, he would do it for the love of money. What a shame that we all live to see prophecy being fulfilled. Imagine one of the two women we see on the platform of the old nastiness as recently as a few days ago told a confidant in private that he, this Eddie Frederick, Ain't lie about chief, you know. He knows so much about this man. My response to that is that they just come. They will learn. That one can be seen dancing and prancing and taking all sorts of nonsense to the people through talk on platforms to the chairing of the old nastiness himself until her turn comes like Mrs. Delma Thomas, to be ridiculed and ostracized. It is not a question of if, but rather when. A turn soon come, as the old nastiness is not a forgiving person. He is the embodiment of Satan indeed. He remember, remembers no good thing no one has ever done for him. If and when you falter, he places you in the briefcase for eternal punishment. Even the people with sense and proper education that he was able to attract support from, he never used over the years as advisors or even thought of employing in one capacity or other. When he could take that ordinary woman, as the Jamaican say, a ordinary woman from one of the St. Andrew's constituencies to appoint to the cabinet of the country as minister of education. <laughs> he tells you what he thought of education and what he thought of the other so-called educated and certificated enablers continued and in some cases still continue to support that old nastiness and his nonsense up to today. Only when you pay attention, folks, you see these things. Like I'm seeing constantly how when several of the NDC supporters have no appreciation and gratitude, their lives will always recycle their pain. Somebody recently described a certain swath of the NDC supporters as fundamentally green, wearing yellow. Ouch. 
If this does not hurt, I don't know what else will. The core support of the NDC is never enough to win any election, yet totally sufficient to get 15-0 each time. If it were not for the presence of change ahead of that party, they were well on their way for another chunksing at the polls in 2022. Yet for all, they will not realize the importance of leveling up and raising their reasoning standards. Many of them wanted exchange in that they wanted to be the people to take the culture of nepotism, rape and pillage of the country's finances into their everyday focus on easy prosperity. Not realizing that they have to take their cue from their leader. He was never a man who entered politics as a thief. As one they all know too well. He was never one who was accused. Now deceased ex-Ministry of Finance employee, female employee, of being raped by him when they were working overtime on a national budget presentation late in the office. Oh no, the current holder of the office of prime minister is a decent Grenadian whom this old nastiness has cast several negative and degrading aspersions against in order to give life to the old saying, misery loves company. It is interesting to note that the people we least expect to support and follow and even enable this old nastiness. Good. Whoops, let me just die. Continue to prove how much of a Christian society our society is not. They go to church without fail, and yet they support the devil. They go to church without fail, and yet they offer their children as sacrifices to this devil of an old nastiness. Just look at what they aided and abetted the Satan of an old nastiness to do with their children over the period 95 to 2022. Put them in an Imani program that had no substance whatsoever and no end, after which the only thing they could have graduated to was debushing, the more menial of tasks. Yet for all, these people remain active supporters of this visionless old nastiness. Many of these same young people who morphed into adults, many of whom are now close to 50 and no hope. They are still living home, putting their old parents in old people homes just to force wrath their properties as inheritance which they feel they are entitled to. Just look at the ripple effect of having a substanceless idiot in charge of a nation's affairs. Indirectly turned supporters into direct and indirect thieves, as if to glorify his own culture. The funny thing here is that so many of them today do not even know what they are doing and how they are thinking and living is so wrong. Could you imagine that, folks? Could you imagine that? That is really a travesty indeed. What a travesty. I'm totally convinced that every time the student is ready, the teacher shows up. Just tell me that you are ready, and I'm here to teach from my wealth of experience and focused knowledge. Not focused information, you know, focused knowledge. Anytime we hear whining in a vicinity, folks, this lets us know there are victims in the neighborhood. All the whining we are hearing coming from the one-time treasury feeders of pre-June 23rd, 2022 era. Let us know they are victims of the old nastiness and they are too unconscious to recognize this. Truth be told, if Satan did not pity young people, why should he pity you? In Grenada, none was 
led by old nastiness. Our personal Satan, who took time to set up Grenada as his personal hell of a kingdom. Out of power now, the whole country is booby trapped with misfits, square pegs in wrong holes, wrong pegs in square holes. The civilization is limping with master followers of Satan in leadership positions all over making Mawet. The entire public services are washed with incompetence led by many who are not familiar with the rules that govern their conduct and their behavior, let alone those of their subordinates. The entire service operates willy-nilly in the total absence of professionalism. What is professionalism? Folks, when defined, it simply means an approach to work using knowledge and high standards of conduct, something we are loath to see around us these days. I recently saw a little clip that Ali Mathura, one of the most ardent and protective soldiers of the Deacon Mitchell administration, put out with the old nastiness himself, referring to this administration as corrupt. Could you imagine that? This old stinker. Since he normalized corruption because of his very nature as the worst kind ever to go the corridors of power in Grenada, aided and abetted by negligent Grenadians. Anything anyone else does, he wants to attribute to his corrupt ways. The number of things that are happening to bring meaningful benefits to the people of Grenada carte blanche, some of which may have a high price tag on them. You know what? The old nastiness can only think what he would have been able to do with probably kickbacks from them had he been there and he cannot see them not doing the same. Folks, that is how the mind of the old nastiness is wired. Every time he utters a word of corruption at the Deacon Mitchell administration, it is because he's jealous of their capacity at original thought to the benefit of the wider population, which he does not have and never was capable of exhibiting. As none of his intentions, when he was around the precincts of power, were with people in mind. It always had to benefit him. According to Ali Mathura, this ardent soldier who must get the prize for standing consistently in the gap for the Deacon Mitchell administration to defend them assiduously against the rants and utterances of the old nastiness. He needs to toss out the Grenada Shipping Agents funds, the chicken farm, the shrimp farm, liver of first uh, cow coast, I don't know what that means. The money you collected from Restina in his home in St. Morris in Switzerland. The con man investor who fooled you with a picture of the gem and brought in international shame and scandal to Grenada with First Bank. The government money you gave to relatives to supposedly bail out a call center in St. Andrew. The public promise to repay and which was never repaid. The commission you gave to your friend to open Cap Bank in the absence of the ECCB's approval, which collapsed with poor people losing their savings. And the owner of that said bank rotting in jail today. The investor who gave Mount Hartman for free, free of cost. And we had to buy back when the project failed. The silly unconscionable Lewis Hamilton deal the money you got from Trinidad after Hurricane Ivan for Carlton Home and Coast Guard Base. Aren't all these deals acts of corruption? You must know. You see, folks, I am sure there are many more that others who have been paying attention can add to this list. Yet you have this old nastiness as the gall to call this decent lot in government who replaced 
his old expired, and listen to my word now for accent, backside. You calling people corrupt. You could only be addressing nincompoops in truth, which most times your audiences resemble. If Satan did not pity young people, especially between 1995 and 2022 for the most part, why should he pity you? Folks, let's take a break. You see, heat, heat start. Let's take a little break. Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. This is edification, made possible by the efforts of the Center for Democracy and Good Governance, CDGG. The strength of views and opinions expressed during edification are not necessarily a reflection or representation of the sponsors and or affiliates of this program. I want the best for my family, so every meal has to be perfect. Every bite has to say, mm, mm, mm. There's no doubt in my mind that the best in frozen meats and vegetables have to come from the country cold store. Hams, turkeys, sausages, beef, pork, chicken. I just don't know my family is in the same hands. I the country cold store for being there for us for the past 40 years. The country cold store, providing the best in frozen meats and vegetables since 1969. It could take time and I write down all the things that I love from my eye now. Best believe the list gon' be like five miles long. Best believe it's love that makes me sing this song. The cleanest beers on the waters. Friendly people meet in every corner. Together, so love is what we stand for. We stand for. We stand for. Oh, I am in this song. Look at how we've grown, how far we've grown. Fifty years we strong and more to come. More to come. More to come. I'm going higher. Fifty years we're blessed with ocean fire. Still reaching for more. Going up, going up, 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 as we aspire, build up ourselves, put people together. Bang, 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 it's only up. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, and advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver, can deliver, can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Wonderful, folks. And um, let me just uh, apologize. I think some people could not have made any comments because the setting was wrong. I just adjusted that. So you can make your comments now, folks. Sorry about that, but you know, oh boy, I have a lot going on here. So peace and blessings. Folks, welcome back. And for those of you just joining, I'd like to welcome you. For those who are joining for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. Last week, when I buried the issue of ego, folks, I stopped short of mentioning anything relating to the behavior and eventual outcome that was brewing between the Roman Catholic bishop and the popular local priest in the River Sally area. I have a number of sadlies that I'd like to share with you today, folks. Sadly, this bishop could attract such vitriol from locals whose church he heads. Sadly, that things could get out of hand between these two big men that godly dialogue could not solve beforehand. Sadly, that a leader of a religious sect, the largest in the state, could be called out by so many for his perceived partiality towards the kakistocrat, the leader of the worst kind Grenada has ever had to ever grace our political leadership landscape. Sadly, that immediately after a service, the congregation of a church could descend into anger and outright defiance at their shepherd's declaration that their parish priest has been suspended indefinitely. 
Sadly, we are seeing this situation divide the church further on account of this development, which to me confirms their suspicion and perception that the bishop is sympathetic to the most diabolical politician Grenada has ever had. Sadly, the issue which caused this apparent ego-centered fracas between the two members of the same priestly sect and religion, boss and long-serving, well-loved local priest, is a matter far removed from Grenada, but which resides far away in Gaza, where no issue was ever raised by the church and its leader. When Grenada was faced with all the rampant excesses of a political system presided over by a man that can be aptly described as the most unfit for public life in all imaginable ways. And yet nothing was ever addressed in that direction. Sadly, the spat between the two supposed men of God has nothing to do with our own Gaza here between 1995 and 2022, for the most part. When the old nastiness was running amok and operating with spite and vindictiveness. And so anyone who was not for him, nothing for them. Both men ought to have known this, as so many were victims of this pol politics of spite. Sadly, the same church, which is supposed to be the leading local congregation by way of numbers, never lent its voice to the wanton victimization and spite meted out to several decent citizens out in the open as a means of pressuring them because of their open or covert opposition to wrongdoing in public life by elected and appointed public officials. Sadly, the same church has been showing signs of having lost its way with recent development serving to shore up that perception and encrypt same in the general irrefutable belief among us that their leaders were bought and paid for by the local devil. Sadly, when the bishop was appointed, it appeared to be a breath of fresh air for the church-going Catholics which faded consistent over the entire tenure of the said bishop, polarizing the atmosphere and allowing politics to divide the congregation rather than invoking God's will to have a united church where people could seek proper solace and hope. Sadly, this bishop failed once more as his predecessor to unite the church and the polarization of this nation really requires that any head of any religious sect be impartial, and if not altogether, must be seen to be so. But sadly, this was not to be as the conduct of this bishop led so many to perceive him to have been bought and paid for by the old nastiness. We should all rejoice that three stalwart Grenadians made a timely intervention to prevent what could have been very unpleasant for the church at River Sally, as people were intent on going out to hear their beloved parish priest. Today, in spite of the bishop's announced suspension of him from all priestly duties last Sunday, Mr. Terrence Smith, Ms. Shireen Wilkinson, as mediators, and Dr. Francis Alexis QC, Casey rather, as witness, have given all of us hope in our people once more. Three chairs to them. Folks, if Satan did not pity young people, why should he pity you? <laughs> Let's get another break and we'll come right back with some more. Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. 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 Eddie Frederick has got it all.
This is edification, made possible by the efforts of the Center for Democracy and Good Governance, CDGG. The strength of views and opinions expressed during edification are not necessarily a reflection or representation of the sponsors and or affiliates of this program. I want the best for my family. So every meal has to be perfect. Every bite has to say, mm, mm, mm. There's no doubt in my mind that the best in frozen meats and vegetables has to come from the country cold store. Hams, turkeys, sausages, beef, or chicken. I just don't know my family is in safe hands. Thank you, country cold store, for being there for us for the past 40 years. The country cold store, providing the best in frozen meats and vegetables since 1969. If I take time and I write down all the things that I love on my island. Best believe that it's gonna be like five miles long. Best believe it's love that makes me sing this song. The cleanest beers on the waters. Friendly people meet in every corner. Togetherness and love is what we stand for. We stand for. Yeah. We stand for. Oh, I am in this song. Look at how we've grown, how far we've run. Be as we strong and more to come, more to come, more to come. As only Eddie Frederick can deliver, 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 deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Wonderful, folks. Wonderful. I I don't know. If some people still can't comment. I don't know what has caused that. But maybe you can change from Edward Frederick to Eddie Frederick Page, and see what you know difference it makes. But I I really don't know what else to do, and I can't be doing that. And this is fire, and I have a lot of ground to cover. So, are you saying make yourself snappy, man? Say what's happening. You, where there's a will, there's a way. Make things happen, my dear Lydia. Make things happen. You know how it is. Folks, welcome back. And for those of you just joining, please share, share, share. Goodly folks, we are witnessing a tide moving away from the old nastiness, which represents the more intelligent and probably more strategic thinking segment of supporters because of the vulgar behavior of the old nastiness in an effort to hold on to the leadership of the national nasty party, the NNP. We have been hearing from Hamlet Mark and to Bud Brathwaite, only those two so far willing to enter the public domain with their sentiments. But the number of others who are all over talking and ventilating their disgust with the henchman style of the old nastiness to realign the executive and de delegates, to position things to favor him, to retain leadership is unheard of. I was told he showed a long-standing comrade. This long-standing comrade has been a comrade in arms. He showed him the door. And the man attempted to hold honest and frank talks with him about the way forward for the party. I have always touted accolades in favor of Hamlet Mark and his ability to deliver properly structured commentaries. His penmanship is second to none. He has always been an unassuming giant in the local field of journalism, totally unparalleled. His political PR progress is something that has won for him some unenviable perceptions. But he must work in the interest of his clients, whether we like his clients or not. In the same way, although we may not agree with any or all of his opinion pieces, or even his reflections of what he captures for new leases, we cannot question how well written they have always been. 
How, how much Mark and I have history? And we share very unexpectedly high mutual respect and regard for what each do. This dates back to his years at Young Sound FM or YS FM, to its private treaty bank sale to Joel Webb back in the day, in the middle of which I was, leading to my introduction to living in Miami in the immediate aftermath of the passage of Hurricane Ivan. It was Hamlet Mark who taught me Adobe Audition, which I'm totally selfish and act today. We cooperate a lot, and he can tell you I stand by to commend him on the news and other program outputs on his WPG-10, which up to this day has maintained consistency at being able to deliver the best news packages any local entity offers our general public. All because Hamlet Mark the consummate journalist produces in the ground. You know, I say all of this as a precursor to my delight to share something he, Hamlet Mark, recently packaged and published from his notes from all around, which about sums up the National Nasty Party and its diabolical leader, the old nastiness. Captioned, of course, NNP's stage five cancerous anti-democratic tumor. If the new national party in Grenada was some community club in the back of Munich, what is happening with it would have been awkwardly comical and made for good rum shop laugh. But it being a supposedly serious political party seeking to govern a nation again, makes it more like tragic comedy it is simply dangerous. The party has never been well known for its embrace of eternal democracy, but its long serving political leader and former prime minister has spent the last two years making its previous stint look like a Happy Hill RC harvest. This is now the real deal, and this is the real him. The party state has nothing to do with the ambitions of Emmeline Pear, Peter David, Dwight Hosford, or anyone else who rightfully wants to dream. It has everything to do with a man who has suffered such a psychological blow from his defeat at the hands of what he himself called little children, that one of his few fantasies, even in his golden age, is to become prime minister again. 50 cent once wrapped. Get rich or die trying. Doc's version is get power again and die while trying. The former prime minister has crippled or dismantled every organization in the party since he was booted out of San Susi. He's hardly on speaking terms with its last elected chairman, Oliver Joseph, and its general secretary, Roland Bola simply because they have dared speak about having a long overdue convention before July. That won't happen. Not because the executive has not yet set a date. As both he and Pear have lied in public interviews. But because, simply put, he is not ready yet. He is busy going around the country trying to change properly registered delegates to guarantee he will still have his way. When he says the party must organize itself first before a convention, read that to mean he must finish changing the delegates, never mind the party's constitution, which he has thrown away, that says shall hold a convention every year without putting any conditions on it. Every week he delays further exposes both his paranoia and his weakness. The emperor knows, as I write, he has no clothes, but he is busy trying to find them and put them on. And he's very experienced at that. Doc has been at it for a long time, since 1984-85, when he was not even the leader. 
How do I know? You see, back then, I was supposed to be the youngest delegate representing uh, polling division number two in Munich, along with Shirley MacMillan. I was working as the young editor of the national newspaper, the party's organ, after George Brisbane had pulled me out from my temporary cheap teaching job on a Friday afternoon to come take charge of the organ the next Monday morning. So I had access to the people at the party office who told me that he had ordered my name scratched out because I was one of Brisbane's boys. Larry Joseph, a genuine Democrat, a man who gave him his loyalty was there in those times. But Doc doesn't talk to him anymore because Sir Lawrence did suggest letting democracy reign for once in their old party. In the last few weeks, we have been having the wrong discussion about NNP. At its core, it does not face a leadership problem. It faces a democracy crisis, one that manifests itself in a leader in spite of polls suggesting otherwise, determined to stay by any means necessary. Emmeline Peer's leadership fantasies end where Dr. Mitchell's self-ego begins. She may become his plan G after Akima Paul, who was his plan D, Derek Sylvester, his plan E, Dwight Huff, Osford, his plan F, either fell out of his plans or saw through him and refused to bite the poisoned apple he fed Elvin Nimrod and in latter days, Peter David. Keith Mitchell has always been and remains his own plan A, B, and C. Pierre is not running for any leadership right now. The news reports have been wrong. The Andrews South MP herself says it. She will only take the punt when there is a vacancy. Pierre knows there is not one right now. She's not even sure when there will be one. Keith Mitchell has told his people, nobody challenges him unless there is a vacancy. And he has proudly declared that there is no. Appreciating that the whole truth has never been his strong suit. The former prime minister inappropriately used Winston White's funeral to make his point about challenges. Whatever you think about Doc and this situation, he's being true to form. Two days after the last election, he told me boldly to my face, the NNP belongs to him and Gregory Bowen and nothing will change unless they, truthfully him, decide. Sadly, Emmeline Pear is the latest political hostage he's using to buy time. Remember, Doc is the same man who sent a committee headed by Bowen to Peter David a few months ago to demand that he cease campaigning or supposedly, I guess, face disciplinary action. Their reason then? Well, the race for leadership has not yet started and other people might be interested. So wait until others declare. Never mind, Emmeline has semi-declared. The MP who sometimes herself sets the agenda is attending every single meeting the party is currently having around the country. David sometimes, on her own insistence, according to inside party sources, has not been invited to any meeting outside of the parish of St. George. Maybe it is an acknowledgement that he's too popular in St. Andrews and St. Patrick's to risk it. At some point soon, the likes of Oliver Joseph, the chairman, and Roland Buller, the general secretary, Peter David, the assistant general secretary, must decide what they are willing to do about this anti-democratic cancer that's at stage five in the NNP. I guess it depends how they want history to regard them. The political leader has dismantled 
every half-working institution in the party. He has set up what he called leads and deputy leads in every constituency and demanded that they report directly to him, not General Secretary Bola. For practical purposes, he has fired Bola. Maybe, to put it nicely, he has been neutered. Dr. Mitchell has made it clear that there is a yearning for the old NNP, whatever that means, emphasizing the point he has brought back Anne Antoine as a lead in the South, even after not reportedly breaking a word with her for more than a decade. The former Prime Minister finally becoming the Mick Jagger of Grenadian politics. The senior citizen putting his old band back together and getting ready for a greatest hits album. Only last week, he was at practice, dancing to a recent campaign song of his, Never get weary yet. A man who is planning on leaving soon will not be so eager to making the point about staying power as the song depicts. His now illegal and unconstitutional executive is filled with people most suffering from battered woman syndrome. They all know their old lover is bad for them. They grumble about it but afraid to do anything about it. With his own polls, he hid from the people before the elections, showing his leadership was a drag on the party in another maneuver to buy time. The then Prime Minister asked then party chairman, Anthony Botswa, to meet with people interested in potential party leadership. Bowen, David and Pear attended. Boatswain uh, alluded to the development in an interview. He was pulled over the coals afterwards by the very man who set it up. Doc was never serious. It was just one of those attempts to buy time. And he's doing it again. Pair in true fashion, in honor of her boss, I guess. Earlier this year told a to-the-point interview on GBN that she had never expressed interest in any leadership. That's okay if you believe Doc's story that he never said he was going. But the late Basdo Panley of Trinidad and Tobago said it best, politics has a morality of its own. In full disclosure, the one for the road concept was sold to him by me, but that was just half of the message. He was supposed to use the campaign to outline the, a detailed plan for transition. He bluntly refused repeatedly to do the second part. Wait to hear all the excuses he gave in my forthcoming book. For years, I've told everyone who would listen that Doc is the leader for life. And in his old age, he has now turned also into a political arsonist, ready to burn his own house down if he can't have his way. Here ends the scholastic summation of the destiny of the old nastiness as so eruditely written by Grenada's foremost writer, Hamlet Mark. Hamlet, we must all understand, folks, is twofold. He's a journalist and he's a public relations marketing strategist for political organizations, both at home and in the sub-region. His Carib Update News exposes him to regional developments, which he is passionate about and therefore influences a rare level of networking. No other local media personality can boast. As a PR marketing strategist though, Hamlet Bark is tunnel visioned for the benefit of his client. Simple minds who may fall in the category of being on the other side of the organization that he may be contracted by would feel justified in regarding him as a hatchet man. And because they spend so much time focused on him as such, they always lose because they spend not enough time on developing a product 
of what they support and always behave defeatist, always allowing Hamlet Mark's client to win and resoundingly so. Let it be known that he has actively served both major lo local political organizations and was actually victorious on their behalf. Anyone who knows Hamlet Mark knows that his friendships are never compromised by any of his efforts. Anyone who misunderstands his roles would leave with the perception that he's not to be trusted. I have never misunderstood his roles. And even though my principles preclude me from serving any diabolical client, I appreciate our difference in that regard. What a lot of us would do well to appreciate is the fact that even the most guilty of criminals deserve professional and well-meaning legal representation as the constitution of our various countries dictates that it is better to set a guilty man free than to imprison or execute an innocent one. I have looked at many comments under this sharing by Hamlet Mark, and I was amazed of how many of us seem bent on sticking our focus on the simplistic perception of Hamlet Mark not being someone to be trusted. A broader view would be to welcome him as part of the universal ordering that the old nastiness is about to be sent where he belongs once and for all to the political cemetery for history to be justifiably unkind to him exponentially based on his transgressions against so many decent Grenadians while he was riding high. It is always said, be careful how you treat people when you are on your way up because you may need them on your way down. I've heard so many political has-beens who are not paying attention properly to the unfolding of things political around, resorting to the same old stale leftover thinking from 30 or 40 years ago. The Deacon Mitchell administration has to be careful not to sign any pact with the likes of Hamlet Mark and others going forward. According to these has-beens, you see, we must never forget that politics makes for strange bedfellows, a truth we must deal with. Strategy is what gets votes to increase, and votes are what win an election. At times, when one wants to prosecute a devil, one has to go to hell for evidence and witnesses. We should not take the simplistic approach to pro prosecuting this devil of an old nasty with old talk and being sorry that he's not prosecuted for all his transgressions against the people and our national treasury. Oh no, old talk won't do that. Trust me, the old nastiness is suffering as the nobody he is without the status of prime minister. He has no friends and the wench of a faceless, nameless monster cannot help him as she has caused his total isolation. She sees and knows the truth about the real man without tight clothes, without shoe polish in his hair, without deodorant, so she knows his real body odor. She knows his abilities and inabilities. She knows what he packages to fool the masses when out in public. She has to face the reality of her regrets in private. Folks, if Satan did not pity young people, why should he pity you? Let's take a break and we'll come back with another segment because today's program has five segments. <laughs>
Jim Frick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. This is Edification, made possible by the effort of the Center for Democracy and Good Governance, CDGG. The strength of views and opinions expressed during edification are not necessarily a reflection or representation of the sponsors and or affiliates of this program. I want to thank my family. So every meal has to be perfect. Every bite has to say, mm, mm, mm. There's no doubt in my mind that the best in frozen and vegetables has to come from the country cold store. Hams, turkeys, sausages, beef, or chicken. I just don't know my family is in the same Thank you, country cold store, for being there for us for the past 40 years. The country cold store, providing the best in frozen meats and vegetables since 1969. If I take time and I write down all the things that I love on my island. Best believe my lips gon' be like five miles long. Best believe it's love that makes me sing this song. The cleanest beers are no waters. Friendly people meet in every corner. Togetherness and love is what we stand for. We stand for, we stand for. Oh, I'm not in this song. Look at how we've grown, how far we've run. Fifty years we strong and more to come, more to come, more to come. I'm going higher. Fifty years we're blessed, we're pushing higher. Still reaching for more. Going up, going up, I have to go. Going up, going up, going up, 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 as we aspire, build up ourselves for people together. Bang, bang, bang. It's only up. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver, can deliver, can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Wonderful, wonderful, folks. And welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Folks. For those of you just joining, welcome. For those of you who are joining for the first time, hearty welcome to you. And of course, you see, when people who are known supporters of the National Democratic Congress take the one dimensional route of a simpleton to criticize the PR marketing strategist role of Hamlet Mark in the past, without recognizing his successes over the years and mouthing off negative sentiments in that direction, we can see why they were amply qualified all the time for 15-0. You see, I learned a long time now that it is better to remain quiet and thought a fool than to speak up and remove all doubt. And a lot of NDC supporters would do well to take this advice to heart. And for God's sake, stop being so quick to write and post things that show you up as terribly wanting. Strategy wins, not simplicity or simplistic inclinations. Votes win elections, not emotional rubbish, old talk and nonsense. Suppose the next election reaches a stalemate, 7-7, seven, seven, and one constituency, probably where Hamlet Mark votes, requires one vote to tip the balance in NDC's favor. Are some of you saying he should keep his vote or go ahead and vote for the National Nasty Party and let them win instead? Something for you to ponder. We have to be broad-minded and stop coming across as green people who only vote yellow. After all, you were credited with a lot more sense than that. There are still some of you who have a problem with Delma Thomas being on board. Even up to this day, fuss you don't understand the numbers game. And not critical thinking enough to appreciate the national appeal she comes to the table with. There are some of you who do not appreciate the fact that the way the old nastiness treated her 
was enough for her to turn her back on that organization and the old Nazis himself, totally. There are many NNP supporters all over the state of Grenada who have been turned off by the way the old nastiness has treated Mrs. Delma Thomas, which gives her national appeal, and therefore renders her totally qualified to be the person to run in that constituency in 2027, all being equal. We have to understand that if the NDC does not change its long time strategy, it will not be able to take advantage of the national popularity of our rock star Prime Minister Deep Mitchell. All the old construct of the NDC knows is how to get 15 0. The new leader has changed that. And if the hardcore NDC supporters want that to get even better and thus change the trajectory of the party going forward, they have to trust the leader and let him lead. NDC without the decent Mitchell could not break the 15 0 cycle, 20 June 2022. So he comes to the table with some serious capital. Some NDC supporters have understand that ignorance is not restricted to only the green beasts. Several of you demonstrate all too often. Ignorance is not a demon to be cast out. Many of the problems that several of you suffer from is ignorance. And you cannot pray your way out of a problem that you behaved your way into. You only behave your way out of it by positioning yourselves with proper focus. And only an open mind can lead to there. The biggest attack on our life is not the deterioration of our health, folks. No, the biggest attack on our life is the attack to distract because we're dangerous when we maintain focus. Folks, I am always maintaining focus. Y'all are too fickle. The NNP is in total disarray. They're coming up with all sorts of nonsense as distractions. And you're all falling for it because you're not focused. Stay focused. You see, that is why I will always believe many of us need to be protected from ourselves. We are too fickle and too easy to be removed from our center. Quite a number of you NDC supporters need to evaluate your purpose, your mission, and what gets your attention. I would strictly advise you to implement that in your personal lives first, and it naturally follows in all other aspects of your lives. Many of you cannot receive truth and therefore, you cannot have real friendships. That's a fact. The people you trust supposed to be able to hold you accountable when your character is questionable. Friends are the people we trust to have our best interests at heart. If our true friends that we like to boast about to others can't tell us the truth and can't check us when we are out of pocket or even out of line. How can they be our friends or how can we be their friends? Folks, Proverbs 27.6 reads, Faithful are the wounds of a friend but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. That verse compares the trustworthiness of friends' rebuke with the ever popular deceitfulness of an enemy's flattery. That is why I know I 
a best friend material, as I will always tell you what you need to hear and know, and never what you want to hear to make you feel good. If you want to feel good, go and buy ice cream, go and cone. What a lot of you need to know is that for you or anyone to be a real friend, you have to be able, you have to have access, and you have to have permission to tell your friend when they are stepping out of line. If you ever have to feel apprehensive to do so, my advice to you, move along, keep moving as that person is not friend material. And it is precisely why, because really, many Grenadians cannot receive truth. They cannot and do not have true friends in their lifetime. Having someone around you for all of your life alone, that you are not related to, but neither of you want to be truthful to each other does not make you true friends. We need to work on being truthful with each other to have deep, meaningful friendships in our lives. I have a small number of those, and boy, do I consider them my life. We are truthful to each other. And that investment pays high dividends. On the few occasions I would have a gathering at my home, the few who congregate are the folks who deeply matter in my life. I do not accept invitations to socialize with them really, because as they all know, their other friends are not my friends. I will celebrate with them alone by visiting them ahead of their party occasion and enjoy and celebrate them as they are my friends and not their friends that are my friends. Interestingly, if ever they would like to adopt my way of operating and not show up my occasional events, they would think twice. You know why? Because I put a lot of effort into putting decent, genuine people together. I wished I could take a live video camaraderie and true and genuine comfort each feel with each other when we commune and fellowship. No hypocrites, no deceitful and, and, and negative energy around, just real people having a lust and hunger for meaningful socialization, which is totally upset in Grenada for the most part. Folks, if Satan did not pity young people, why should he pity you? Why? Let's take a little break here. Eh? We come back for a final segment for today. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinions as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. This is edification, made possible by the efforts of the Center for Democracy and Good Governance, CDGG. The strength of views and opinions expressed during edification are not necessarily a reflection or representation of the sponsors and or affiliates of this program. I want the best for my family. So every meal has to be perfect. Every bite has to say, mm, mm, mm. There's no doubt in my mind that the best frozen meats and vegetables has to come from the country cold store. Hams, turkeys, sausages, beef, pork, chicken. I just don't know my family is in the same hands. Thank you, country cold store, for being there for us for the past 40 years. The country cold store, providing the best in frozen meats and vegetables since 1969. It could take time and I write down all the things that I love on my island. Best believe the list gon' be like five miles long. Best believe it's love that makes me sing this song. The cleanest beers on the waters. Friendly people meet in every corner. Togetherness and love is what we stand for. Stand for. 
And biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. 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 Eddie Frederick has got it all. Wonderful, folks. And of course, we get ready to wind down now because this is our final segment, bonus segment, all these. Folks, welcome back. I was heartened uh, to awake yesterday morning to see an Ali Mathura post as follows. Oh, how I wish all government ministers will recognize the importance of social media as A.J. Williams. My response was simply, Ali Mathura, so funny I was saying the same thing. Andy Williams makes people feel, who he does not, sorry, even represent, feel involved, as does the Prime Minister. And people always remember the way you make them feel. There are a few of them that are sporadic in their postings. And then there are others again who are just absent. If you like, if you look carefully, you would realize that even some long standing advocates for the NDC stopped posting since they get work. And they could get paid to stop the banks from harassing them for mortgage payments. Totally absent. And when their post is about Gaza, and other things that will not help them keep their work after 2027 election. I rest this right here. <laughs> Folks, that's sad, eh? They get work now, so they could ride high and talk about Gaza and climate change and a set of damn foolishness. They stop defend the thing that will help them maintain their work. Because you and I know nobody could separate them from the party but all of a sudden they're quiet and you have the old nastiness out of office you have teachers posting their support for the old nastiness you have public servants union people but these plain they're decent stupid people it looked like their mortgage might be finished paying in 2027. I never see foolish people so in my life. Well, you know, Ali Mathura, Akim, Lydia, Sawandi, Diane, myself, and a few others who have been consistent, continuing to stand in the gap to make sure that old nastiness stays where he belongs. Out! We are surely not doing what we do because we want anything or getting anything in return. We are committed to the cause for and of genuine change. People like us were never seeking exchange. So we could not be the next corrupt group of supporters looking to replace the beggy beggy and getty getty green beasts. I mentioned earlier that several of the NDC so-called supporters are no different to the green parasites. In fact, they are green like who happen to vote yellow. Sad. Until and unless we lift our level of consciousness, we would continue to eat the bread the devil need. How could you be in a room fitting others by buying rungs upon rungs of drink, drinks rather, that have to be paid for, and you are promising to scandalize a member of the current administration 
if you don't get blocks or cement that you beg for. But you're paying for your drinks and you're fetting people, but you want blocks and cement free. How can you be begging a constituency hopeful on the NDC side for money under the guise that you have no money to eat or to get by, but you are in Steve Duncan's expensive and well worth it reggae show? How could you be sporting two, three thousand dollar smartphones that you never use for anything smart to benefit you? And you have no running water in your house. Your toilet is a hole in the ground outside. Folks, these people should never be qualified to vote or to take any part in democracy as they would only use their right to vote as a tool of transaction. I remember the actuality in 2004. When the U.S. Olympic basketball team got their tails whooped in Athens, even though they had great players, the other teams had one or two players capable of making it on any team in the NBA. The reason for this is that the other teams showed up with great teams who together achieved more. While the U.S. team had great players, full stop. You see, the NDC and its supporters will do well to become a cohesive team and stop the foolishness we see all too often. All those who are known NDC and whose current jobs depend on the party remaining in office need to take a second look at their total silence and disappearance from social media. I am not the only one who's noticing it. After all, they're keeping their work or their board appointments is totally dependent on the NDC remaining in office. That is part of the complacency they have to avoid. I have no work to protect, you know, folks. I just have a commitment to continue to stand in the gap for Grenada to protect it from the likes of the old nastiness. Something that I have started 38 years ago. Hashtag Keith gone and he not coming back. If the star losers in anything would like to remain relevant, folks, listen to me carefully, relevant as leaders, they need to always put the next generation in their space at the appropriate time. Put meaning to your life that you can live in phases. So if and when you reach the legal age of retirement, you retire to something else, thus making room, and rightfully so, for the next generation. Funny enough, the next generation is made up of the ones that tell you, the older generation, things that you don't know because you're not current. No one is known to succeed who attempts to live in two generations at the same time you end up making fundamental fools of yourself. Look at the old nastiness, for example. A fundamental fool. And how much shoe polish he puts in his hair. Tight clothes and padded scratch. Padded crutch. His evil spirit exposes him as an imposter. And just simply, an old nastiness who is sorry, old and irrelevant. Thriving companies and organizations always bring in younger capable people. If you don't like interacting with young people, whether you like it or not, you will be getting older. Old men dream dreams. 
young positive men see visions. Whatever you are doing that you feel is powerful, as you get older, you need to rebrand. You need to level up. Something has to change. As you politically charged, it, it, all you sorry, politically charged infidels, on either side of the local political divide, you must understand and appreciate that you cannot walk into something new with the damaged mind that does not allow you to walk out of something old. There cannot be entry without exit. Many of you will never walk into anything new because of the fear of leaving the old. You are so damaged by what your negligence has normalized over the years that many of you feel people like me have, who have been saying the same thing over and over and over again for years are the wrong ones and that you are right but that is sad as a part of John a sermon recently preached you see when Jesus started rising and he was making news in the towns and villages according to the Bible people started gathering the assignment was not for him to stop the assignment was for him to die and death would have stopped him. If it happened to Jesus, according to the Bible, many of you love to tote and quote. Who flatter any one of you to think that indefinitely you will keep rising, changing lives, affecting destinies, and then the gates of hell will fold their arms, your church, your mystery, ministry, your voice, your business, your job. No. The devil has not changed, folks. It is not only God that does not change. In fact, Satan does not change also. From the time he became Satan, he remains Satan. And you know we have our own Satan in Grenada. Very consistent with the original. Giving the original a lot of competition. Folks, the Hebrew term Satan is a generic noun meaning accuser or adversary and is derived from a verb meaning primarily to obstruct, to oppose. So when you see the old nastiness attempting to obstruct and oppose, he is Satan indeed. So you see how correct we are to refer to the old nastiness of Diablo or Satan or the devil folks your life will never make the old masters our local satan sympathize with you oh no too many of you do not know the enemy you are dealing with he will sell his wife son or mother just to advance personally we see two got sold already with just one more to go if Satan did not pity little children, and there is a cry in Grenada, why should he pity you? Folks, I'm in, I'm out, and I am gone. Thanks for joining. Continue to share. See you next week, God willing, same time, same place for more extraordinary programming. Until then, farewell. Stay safe, stay well. Remain vigilant and lifted. Oh God, stay focused now. Remember, you become a very dangerous person when you are focused. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Just type in my name, Edward or Eddie Frederick. Subscribe, like, share, and be prepared to receive your mental multivitamins as straight up as I deliver them. Peace and blessings to all of you folks. All the very best. Cheers. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces. As only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. This has been edification. Made possible by efforts of the Center for Democracy and Good Governance, CDGG.
The Center for Democracy and Good Governance is a sound organization established to promote strengthening democracy. For too long now, or generally perceived poorly educated electorate have fallen victim to the cheap and inferior propaganda of those seeking to hold others captive under the guise of democracy. Gladly, the CDGG uses edification to help to actively pursue a sustainable approach to reorient our people towards the importance of electing and selecting people of good character to public life. Through edification, we will highlight the importance of education appropriate to our development, proper health care and facilities as our right, respect for law and order, not to mention upgrading our people's thinking so they could become qualified participants in the democratic process to their advantage. After all, Grenada's national constitution makes allowances for the ideal of free men to enjoy freedom from fear and want, which can be best achieved if conditions are created whereby everyone may enjoy his economic, social and political, civil and cultural rights. I want the best of my family. So every meal has to be perfect. Every bite has to say, mm, mm, mm. There's no doubt in my mind that the best in frozen meats and vegetables has to come from the country cold store. Hams, turkeys, sausages, beef, or chicken. I just don't know my family is in safe hands. Thank you, country cold store, for being there for us for the past 40 years. The country cold store, providing the best in frozen meats and vegetables since 1969. Attention all forward-thinking companies. Sure, you can do with a continuous positive boost to your image and impact your bottom line. Hiring the right people with the right attitude and mindset is where to start. Even if you did not get it right through your current hiring methods, we can help develop the right mindset for your current employees. If you think training is expensive, try not training. You will experience a perpetual downward spiral in patronage on account of increased dissatisfied customers. Take things into your hands and engage the best at motivation and customer care training with a tried and tested track record. Visit www.efrederick.com now and learn how you can change the atmosphere in your business and improve the customer experience for everyone who does business with you. Spice Island Beach Resort and Belmont Estate are two such local entities of world renown that have benefited tremendously from ongoing customer care, social skills, and motivation training. Training changes everything for the better for any business and every team member. Enhance employee performance through increased awareness and passion for the job at hand. Greater potential in your workforce awaits you through engaged, high-energy training that works. Log on now, www.efrederick.com. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Deliver, deliver, deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Take time and I write down All the things that I love from my eyes now Best believe when it's gonna be like five miles long Best believe it's love that makes me sing this song The cleanest beers and waters Friendly people meet in every corner Togetherness and love is what we stand for We stand for, we stand for Oh, I need this song Look at how we've grown, how far we've gone 50 years we strong and more to come Oh, to come, 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 to come,